Let's get bootlegging in. You found her. It's Eureka. Actually, I just found her. Hey, Eureka. Hey, girl. How are you? Bootleg opinions. I just touched up. I'm feeling fierce. But one thing we do have to point out for our audience tonight is that we've been doing drag for about seven hours now and we're a little bit patchy. So please okay. forgive us. It is bootleg <laughs> opinions nonetheless. All right? Girl, I don't give a sh Let them judge, honey. We here to judge the dolls, too. Give her opinions, girl. Y'all got opinions, put it in the comments, Miss Mama. <laughs> I didn't come here to get paid by y'all. But what do you think of this season so far? Um, honestly, I think the season's good. The cast is, like, very young, I feel, which is, like, interesting. I guess Safira and Q are probably, like, the most seasoned girls. Oh, I love those two. I can't wait till, like, people start, like, breaking at the edges. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. In a few more months, yeah. we'll be having the finale, and then they'll be having a meltdown if their favorite is not on there. Yeah, I do have to agree about Safira, is that I feel like she's bringing almost, like, all-stars package. You know, like some girls, they do okay on their season and then their runways on All Stars after they start making their money. It's like huge productions. Like, you know what I mean? It's so extravagant yeah. and eleganza. Ooh, excuse me. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> I did Drag Race Live tonight. I did two shows in a row, making me run up and down them stairs. Well, I was doing a Drag Race viewing party and then I hooked outside the highway. Atta girl, make that extra money, sister. Now, category E is sheer eleganza, extravaganza, the show house down boot. I hate my job. I hate my life! First up, we have Tsunami Muse looking beautiful, dripping in beads, baby. She is looking glamorous. Now, let's talk about the beads, right? She took it from the hair to the outfit, and her skin is just glowing. Yeah, I was very impressed with this, and I actually needed a moment like this from Tsunami. Yeah. On the runway, to be honest. Same. Because, like, she's gorgeous, but, like... <laughs> oh, can I stop really quick? You are coming with the honesty, Yes, girl, baby. you know, I got... Because, obviously, like, she's standing up next to her mother, Candy Muse, coming on. Like, she hasn't had the best run the first few episodes, and this is that moment that's like, okay, she's here to compete. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This look is literally stunning. Like what I needed for a share runway and from her. Um, yeah, I felt like the competition for Tsunami started last week when she did the Humpty Dumpty look. But yeah, this is fabulous. Oh, the Humpty Dumpty look was it. You're right, you're right. That was lovely. That was very funny in camp. Yeah. But I needed this, you know what I mean? That gorgeous skin, it's beautifully beaded. It was gorgeous. It really was. Oh, Morphine is next, honey. <laughs> I love, 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 love this look. It reminds me of like showgirls from back home. Like there's a queen named Sable Chanel that was known in the USA pageantry system. And she would do a lot of these like swagged bead looks with like headdresses and stuff like that, which was obviously Bob Mackie inspired. But so this gave me the life I needed. You know, I love that like naked, gorgeous, like silhouetted. I almost wish that the sheer like ended at a certain point and she gave even more nudity like in the leg to make it like a little extra sexy. Cause she has a great body, you know? She so does. she pulled this off better than someone else. Me, basically. And this yeah. dress with the sheer material, very gorgeous <laughs> with her. <laughs> Though I could use a few more inches on the dress and the shoes, maybe not strappy shoes, but you know, I'll give it a pass. She looks gorgeous. <laughs> I think even the swags, it wouldn't have looked like the dress was short if it was like, actually see through and just the beadwork at a certain point. Yeah. It would have made the legs look sexier, yeah. the strappy, she would have made more sense. Yeah, it was just a lot happening at the end of it, for sure. Yeah, these Payless shoes are not it, girl. <laughs> <laughs> it's giving very Payless with the straps, right? That's the BOGO shoe. She got the buy one, get one, girl. You know what I mean, right? The strap shoes. She had to spend that money. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. Oh my God, I felt like I haven't seen you in forever. Oh. I know. It's good to see you. Oh. How have you been? I've been good. The last time I saw you was maybe two years ago before the pandemic. And then after that, you've been on the West Coast. I haven't traveled because, you know, yeah. my season is not airing anymore. So. Girl, listen, that's life. But girl, you're doing your thing online and stuff. You've always been that girl. Yeah. I am not buffed, not blessed, and very bothered in my bedroom. But I'm busy, because I'm keeping myself busy. That's what she said. Yeah. Next up is Maya Iman. Ooh la 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 la. No, this is not it, girl. I would just say ooh la 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 to give it a more oh, of a surprise okay. reveal. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Sorry, girl, I can't. <laughs> well, obviously, you don't watch this show because you have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> ah! I don't, I don't. I'm sorry. 
she texted me before we started. She said, girl, what is the Zoom link? I'm like, girl, did you even read the email that I sent <laughs> last week? It no. had all the information. I kind of read it, girl. I skimmed through it. I had a feeling you skimmed through it because you were so fast in replying. Okay, I girl, I got you. Okay, girl, let's do this. All right, I'm available. I'm like, <laughs> how did you read through that email in 10 seconds, girl? I'm not buying it. But anyway, um, about this look. Yeah. So her and Megami has similar looks. And if I have to pick between the two, I would say that Megami had a better look just because of the hair. But with this look, the hair just ruined everything. And I don't feel like this look was a good resemblance of the original look that Cher did. Because when I see this look, I'm thinking if I can turn back town. Time. Town. If you mean time. <laughs> Tom. <laughs> <laughs> yes, me too. This is very uh, turn back time. It's also just like... Why didn't she choose the look she chose for her at the burlesque premiere? Like, that's such a plain look. I understood she tried to take it to drag. For me, it looks like it was one of those moments where she was like, oh, this will be easy for me to put together and make work. And she probably already had this coat and this bodysuit that she probably does Rihanna's rock star in or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> she probably already had this. And I get it. Drag race is expensive. But it's not it, sis. I mean, she sold it. But as far as like a representation of Cher, it's definitely turned back time, Cher. I would have almost rather seen her in this look, like with the plainness of black, and maybe take it to a fashion element, like where maybe the leather jacket is sewn into it, like a suit oh, yeah. with shoulder pads, and like maybe make it more fashiony to give it, but it not be have to be so plain. But yeah, it's not it for me. Okay, so one thing I can see to improve the look just a teensy little bit is to take the stones a little bit higher. Yeah, I wonder if this is like one of those AliExpress bodysuits or if she actually had this made. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've been a victim of AliExpress yeah. where I buy a look from AliExpress and I bedazzle it because half the work is already done. Well, yeah, plus it's like a pre-made bodysuit. And don't get me wrong, like I'm not mad about it, but this could be like a bodysuit she got from like Rainbow or something and then like added to it, who knows? So like the cut is not built custom for her body. You know what I mean? Well, up next, we got Miss Geneva Carr, honey, that Latino goddess. Yeah, I'm into it. I'm into it. Really? I'm into it. I wish she was cinched more. I need more of a cinch. I mean, I don't hate it for what it is. I think she could have had more on the arms, but it's cute. I mean, it's a cute outfit. At least it like gives me the same look that Cher was giving. I feel like she could have dragged it up. More feathers, higher, touching the gods. The feathers on the arms were plucked, and then the pants were too short. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Well, now who's reading, Miss Yuha? Miss Yuha's going off on the girls. <laughs> I'm not. I'm just telling the truth. I'm just saying as it is of what I would think would look better on her. I'm not here to read the girls. I'm just here to see the girls in the best version of themselves, and I don't think this is the best version of a share that she can do. Yeah, she definitely had, like, one of her homegirls make this outfit that, like, sews locally. <laughs> and it was done in the kitchen floor. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, you hot. This is bootleg opinions, honey. <laughs> I needed more sense. She looks pretty. The top hat is, like, man, I get it. Cher definitely has way more feathers than she does. And she's a drag queen. Yeah, the juxtaposition of, like, who's draggier is definitely Cher. Which is not what you want in a, you know, a Cher runway. That was so sad. Next up is Mirage, looking beautiful. And I love me some Mirage and I love this look too. I know like I kind of put her like aesthetic kind of in the back from the promo look and the entrance look. I wasn't really feeling it, but from since two episodes ago, she's bringing it. When she walks out, the way that the fabric shines mm. with the tassels, with the Vegas elements of it. I know the judges mentioned that this hair is very 60s and the dress was more 70s. I don't mind it because I feel like if you're doing an exact replica, then what's the excitement of that? Like, then just have shares. So I don't mind the hair. I just wish that the bangs were a little bit shorter. Overall, I like this look. Yeah, I think that the hair is very Mirage's brand. She wears ponytails. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's what she does. The look is amazing. Like, I'm sorry. I love this. Yeah. And the gradient of the light purple to the dark purple as she go down. And then when she was twirling and spinning, it was just circling around her very gorgeously. And I love the fact that she's wearing clear heels so that it extends her like a beautifully. Mm-hmm. Megami, honey. Oh, Miss Megami, God. I was actually really impressed with Megami this episode, period. I thought she was really good in the challenge. And the runway isn't like, I mean, for me, 
Her hips are a little low. I feel like the cut of the bodysuit is very replicating the cut on Cher in her bodysuit. Megami gave us like turn back time Cher. Yeah, I like this one too. Um, between, again, her and, I forgot their name, um, I like this one better. Yeah, she did really good replicating this. This is stereotypical Cher. Like, everyone knows this look. It's been done by every Cher impersonator. It's like one of the number one looks. So, I mean, it's like, if you mess up this look, then we're gonna take your gag card away. Yeah, or you might be disqualified from Drag Race. Yeah, you're going home. When you're seriously hurt, your injury can be worth millions of dollars. And that is not a bootleg fact. This video is sponsored by Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm, operating with over 1,000 attorneys in over 50 states. What is that? <gasps> well, let me tell you. Morgan & Morgan is not your traditional law firm. They are operated by a compassionate group of people, for the people. They have been fighting hard to get their clients what they deserve for over 30 years, and their goal is to continue to help those who have become injured. And also, insurance companies often lowball clients' claims, Morgan & Morgan will fight to get you the money that you deserve. Because why? Morgan & Morgan does not settle for low balls. They win, and they win a lot of money. Just in the past couple of months, Morgan & Morgan saw a verdict of $12 million in Florida, 34 times the highest insurance offer, 26 million in Philadelphia, 40 times the highest insurance offer, and $6.8 million in New York, that is 25 times the highest insurance offer. And listen to this. You don't have to pay a dime unless you win. So if you're a broke queen like me who's hesitant to sue, you're in luck, baby. That is amazing. I'm broke too. Duh. Not all law firms are the same. And that's why Morgan & Morgan is here to help you. Fighting big companies take a big law firm. As America's largest injury law firm, they're ready to take on insurance companies of every size, baby. Oh my God, I'm gonna sign up right now. So don't overthink it. Your claim is just one click away. Where? by going to the link in the description. Start suing today! Next up is Plain Jane. When I first saw her, I thought the hair was too short and then I realized, oh, it's just the front that's short. The back is really long. She walks out in this nude illusion with the white feathers and this sparkle that's on the body. Very, very well done. She has layered the crystals to cover up the top tats and the hoo-ha and the mm. feather at the bottom was really full, even more full than Cher. So yeah, great look. Yeah, honestly, Plain Jane does not disappoint. She really doesn't. She might have like the most random attitude, which I don't hate on Drag Race, but I do love her aesthetic. Like the does great drag. Like this is great drag. Like the dress is literally, like you said, almost better made than the original. Like it takes it a little bit to the draggier place. Yeah. Because it needs to be fuller, right? It has to be a little extra. Yeah. Next up is a mandatory meeting. Um, I think this is one of the better looks that she has served down the runway this season. The hair, I'm cool with. The tulle fabric that she has was great too. I also find it really cool that she used tulle material instead of feather because the feather material would have cost her a lot more money, but she was very smart in that way that she used tulle material. Um, the bottom of the dress is grand. There's movement. She added horse hair so that it gives her great shape. My only issue is the top. I feel like there were two straight lines that just kind of cover her tatas mm -hmm. where it could, should yeah. have been a little bit more rounder. It should be lowered a little bit and probably spray adhesive to her body. Yeah, that too. If that line was lowered yeah. and like adhesive to her body, then it wouldn't be riding up. Like it almost looks like it's riding up a little bit and like barely covering her nipples. You know what I mean? Or maybe even a breastplate would have helped. Something to help hold that like shape. You remember her breastplate from the first episode? <laughs> I would rather see her without a breastplate. The triple t not the triple t girl. No, it was the breastplate with the neckline that came all the way up to like her chin. And it was like created that uh, yeah. ripple effect. <laughs> I do like this though. I do like this too. My issue again is the top. You know, like sometimes you put like two socks in there and the placement. Oh, it's giving, it's giving bird seat all day. This little bird seed bags. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's got a couple tins balls in it. But the bottom of this dress is gorgeous. The color is gorgeous. I, this is the best she's looked. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Next up is Dawn. Love the girl, but this was kind of a disappointment. This is terrible. This is yeah. terrible. <laughs> this is not good. It was better when she took the coat off. Yeah, I would say the same thing. Her coat is way too short. The fur's not as puffy. So it takes away the fashion element for me. And I almost wish that she would have done this in a black and white gray gradient 
to literally imitate the photo. That's what I needed. Like, even her doing grayscale makeup would have been cool. Yeah, oh, it's kind of like a black and white version of Cher. Like, imitating the photo. That's what I would have expected from her. Um, I don't think this is great. Until the coat came off. Yeah. And the two color combo was really, like, just weird, too. It doesn't look too pleasing to the eye. And on top of that, it's against white fabric. So, yeah. Yeah, it's rough. The coat is horrible. The bodysuit itself is wonderful. The fit and everything is great, but that coat is not it. It looks like she just had a bunch of red fur and had, like, scraps of the other colors and was like, I'm going to make this work. Yeah, it seemed like something back in the workroom. You just kind of hot glue fur, wrap it around a jacket, you know. Yeah. All right, your turn, Q. I love it. What's her whole name? Q what? Q the Sniper. Oh, just Q. It's Q the Sniper. Q, you know, like, Q the Sniper. Her name's just Q? I made that up. Okay, Q the Sniper, whatever. I love that. Anyway, Q. I think her name's literally just Q, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, I think she looks gorgeous. Like, this is so stunning. The lines in the dress, the makeup is beautiful. The headpiece is great. It's grand. Cher's is actually even a little smaller than hers. Again, this is like a queen taking the share look to the next level. I love this. Love, 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 love. It's not just the fact that it was share, share, share. It was the fact that they dragged it up. If you want an exact replica, just go get share. But we want a drag version of it. So they gave us that. The headdress, beautifully made. And those extravagant feathers must have cost her hundreds of dollars. And the dress had the black bleeding into the white. It was well done. Mm -hmm. This is gorgeously done. If she made this dress, go her. Or whoever made this did a great job. She makes a lot of her own stuff, so I wouldn't be surprised if she made this. Uh, your turn, Plasma. Okay, Miss Plasma. Um, yeah, is her whole name Plasma? You yeah. don't know. You don't even know. I, I don't know. I, you don't I, even I, watch this show. Girl. You don't even watch girl. this. <laughs> you don't even watch I do this a viewing show. party. Ah. No, you know what it is? You know what it is? I have the RuPaul syndrome. I have the RuPaul syndrome. I reveal a lot of looks from different franchises. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just know that. what they did on the show. I just don't know their full name or what city they're from. Right. Or their age. Or their favorite color. Or if they're even on Drag Race. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this? Is this, um, um, is okay. this uh, Spice or Sugar? No, um, I, what? No, that was a that was a bad joke. Oh yeah, yeah, I got you. It was a terrible joke. You're right. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, you know what also is like a terrible joke is the bottom of this dress. I don't yeah. like that she's holding it the whole time. Like it goes to show me that you're worried that you're not going to be able to sell the length of this train. Then don't have a train that long. You know what I'm saying? Like it took away the glamour. Because this is beautifully done. Like, the top of this dress is gorgeous. The lines are great. The velvet's rich with the rhinestone legs. Like, I think she looks great. But she should have dropped that skirt at the end of the runway at least. Like, show us that you can wear and sell the garment that you're wearing. You know what I mean? I don't know. Because when she finally threw it down at the very end, right before she walks off, I was like, okay, now that is money. That's gorgeous. Like, I want to see a train laying on the floor. For me, what took away the drag aspect of it when she was holding it, it just looked like a top that was gorgeously done and then mm. a piece of fabric at the bottom. That's what it reads to me when she's holding it. And that's why when she's holding it, it's not giving train. Yeah. It definitely took away from it. Like, I would have even liked it more if she would have just made it like a kick bottom gown. Yeah. You know what I mean? And took the train off if she was worried about wearing the train. Or she can do a high front and low back so if she's worried about, you know, tripping or whatever. But if she's worried about tripping, for anybody that's watching, to make the train work and you don't trip and fall, the ideal way to walk is to walk to the front and then walk to the side and then walk a huge circle so you don't trip on your train. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you've done pageants. Yeah, and also learn how to kick your train around. Like, there's a way to pivot and you like pull the train around with the toe of your foot and you just learn how to do that, you know what I mean? And then when you step back out, you scoop your foot so you don't step on the dress. But I will say that she did great as Barbara Streisand at the acting challenge and for someone who's been doing drag for such a short time, I think like two or three years only, Um, yeah. Really well done to get on Drag Race. Yeah, she was great. She was great in the Barbara's Trash End. For she was very great in the challenge show. Did you even see it? <laughs> I did. Nymphia wins. I don't like this. I'm okay with this, <laughs> but the whole bar was screaming when she came out. I'm like, it's just a 
panty and a bra and yeah. this thing that we've seen at every drag show, at every brunch, at every bachelorette party. I'm okay with this. Yeah, but it is imitating the look because that is yeah. what Cher was wearing. Yeah. And the look is good, but it's like the nude legs, like the tights, the tights were a little too noticeable for me with it being so nude in the midriff. And then the nude on the tits, like didn't match the nude of the torso. It was just, there were moments of the nymphy way look that I didn't care for. Otherwise, like the headpiece is beautifully made. Like the hair, the makeup, like- Me too. From the up, I'm buying it. Yeah. But like right below the down, it fell apart for me. Could have pulled the line of the panties up further on the hips to again, not give such a long square torso. Like give me a higher hip line too. Cause Cher was very like that high cut. And I was missing that too. Honestly, I was a little bit disappointed that she picked this look. I would expect her to pick a look with more fabric. Okay. Because she's just done so yeah, well I mean, in the runways. I don't hate the look choice. I just don't like the bottom half of it, literally. I don't hate the look too. I just wish that she would have chose a different look. Yeah. Okay. All right. Last up is Safira Cristal giving you all stars drag, baby. The fro, it is to the gods. It is dragged up. It is bigger than Cher. The piece around her shoulders was gorgeous with the feathers. And there's just this touch of just like regal blue to this entire outfit. And then she got this piece of fabric draped around her. Mm -hmm. Very lovely. Wow, orgasmic. Yeah, I think it's gorgeous. I love that it's almost like tribal when she first walked out with like this, yeah. you know, kind of Egyptian like neckline and with the fro. And it took it to another place, which I loved because she was like, okay, I'm gonna give it to y'all drag, but then I'm gonna take this off. And then she takes that collar off. Yeah. So I think it was a great sale. I think it's gorgeous. She's smart. Whoever's making her clothes is really great. Uh, they're great craftsmen. I'm making them. I'm just kidding. Right. Um, <laughs> well, go. Yeah, we Who is your favorite look, Eureka, out of all these hoes? I think Plain Jane and Q tied for my top two looks because I think they both executed them so beautifully that it's hard to pick one or the other. And then, then Safira would come in close. I would say Safira is my number one because not only did she give a really, really drag element to the look, but there was a little bit more of an X factor to it. So I would say Safira is my favorite look. I can see your point. And Safira's look is amazing. But I think for me, yeah. I was so thirsty for that like Bob Mackie, like elegant gown, you know what I mean? Like take for share. So I think I was just eating up this whole like glamorous, beautiful gown moment. So for me, I mean, I'm sorry, but Q and Play Jane are still my favorites. But Safira's sold, like I live. <laughs> that's fine. I don't care that we have different opinions. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's my bootleg opinion. And that's what makes bootleg opinions so special is that we can have different opinions mm -hmm. and you'll still get fucked for the next bootleg opinion episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what, honestly, opinions are like assholes and everyone's got one. No, baby, opinions are just like assholes. No. Opinions are just like assholes because not everybody has one. Wait, everyone has a butthole though. I don't. Girl, you have a butthole. Well, anyway, Eureka, <laughs> it was so great chatting with you and thank you so much for making time of with course. us from your Drag Race Live. I love you so much, sister. It's really good to see you. Likewise. Bye. Be safe. Bye. Bye. Hey, squirrel friends. When one video ends, just click on another one. It's called cringe viewing. Go ahead. I support you.